Hey folks, welcome to the next installment of Let's Play a GEOD's Civil War. Before I forget, because I'm afraid if I don't do it now, I will forget, here on the next turn, a new option for us has popped up. Here in the Politics tab of the ledger, it reads Prisoners of War Exchange. And if I sign this, and if my opponent also signs this, then we will exchange some prisoners. Uh, I've if I click on the Objectives tab, we'll see I have captured 3,500 Confederate prisoners by this point. You can't read uh, how many prisoners of mine that they've taken, but uh, I think they've taken some by now. So we'll exchange these prisoners uh, if we both click this button. I don't really understand what the benefit of that is, if it gives us conscript points or something. But uh, I'll click it, and we'll see what happens. While we're here, take a look at the ob Objectives tab. It looks like the member from the, I think, the very first video. Uh, I pointed out this Confederacy Foreign Help number. It's been fluctuating around through the game. Right now it's 2. I don't think it's risen above 10. And nothing happens until it hits 100. But it does, if you recall, the English join the side of the Confederacy. So this is great news for us. Doesn't look like the English will ever join the Confederacy side as long as we keep up this trend. Uh, and finally, here's an indication of how we're doing. Here's the total combat losses uh, uh, column. We've lost 14,850 casualties. The enemy's lost a little over 18,000. So, uh, yeah, they've taken 3,500 more casualties than me. That's pretty good. It means we're doing okay. We're fighting sort of a defensive war. These numbers could certainly be much higher. Uh, and they, you know, I'm sure they'll break 100,000 before the end of the game. But, uh, you know, being on the positive side of this number at this point is a good indication we're doing okay. So, on with this turn. Let's see how quickly I can run through this. Uh, here's Hooker. He's besieging Fort Jackson. It looks like, you can't really see that circle, but it looks like, uh, sorry, my dog's barking. Looks like, uh, we can go ahead and assault it now. The only thing there is the garrison. These troops seem to have retreated. So we'll go ahead and afford Fort Jackson, uh, assault Fort Jackson. Coming over here, uh, Albert Sidney Johnston. I'm sorry, I've been mispronouncing these names so far. This is Albert Sidney Johnston. Uh, he's moving up into this area, Roller, Jefferson City. I don't really know exactly where he's headed. Maybe Springfield, maybe Roller. I'm going to have Rosecrans over here on call. I'll pull him over if Johnston really starts making a nuisance of himself. Meanwhile, Nathaniel Lyon working his way through the mountains. He'll be here next turn and then in the area after that, the turn after that. So we have him marching towards Little Rock. You can see for the moment, if I click this button, our uh, supply line's intact through all these depots all the way to Lyon, so Lyon will be receiving supplies as he walks through these uh, regions. What else we got going on? Over here in Kentucky, it looks like they didn't attack, so this division under Siegel has recovered some. It has more recovering to do, but Grant is almost back on the scene, so let's get him into Louisville, where we'll really have solid defenses there and, and, and uh, make sure that uh, we don't lose it. Here, Phil Sheridan, I haven't been pointing this out as we go along, but Phil Sheridan uh, popped up a couple turns ago, maybe his last turn. So I have him moving towards Louisville, where I think I'll be raising more troops in the future. Uh, we've had a lot of generals pop up. A bunch of them popped up here in uh, Washington, D.C. area. Darius Couch, Henry Slocum, Jesse Reno. And all these guys have pretty good statistics. John Sedgwick, so uh, what I really should be doing is taking these better generals and sending them off to my core, where I have a lot of 3 one one generals as division leaders. And I can replace these generals with, with the uh, stronger generals that I have here in Washington, here. Um, I'll do that off screen. I need to think about it a little bit where exactly I want to send them. But I'll be doing that up here in Pennsylvania. Uh, Joe John Stun and uh, another core under E.K. Smith. They have a whole lot of troops. Seem to be heading right towards Pittsburgh, where I have a uh, single division in defense. 
Harrisburg is not under any threat at the moment. Again, so I'm going to take Erasmus Keys and railroad him back to Pittsburgh. So he's been bouncing back and forth in this area, uh, trying to react to wherever the Confederates go. <clears throat> we'll see. I mean, he's got six days to get there. Joe, Joe Johnston may get to Pittsburgh before him, and uh, there may be a mess here. We'll find out next interturn. Uh, I have a few more uh, reinforcements streaming into Washington. See, I'm building up a bunch more divisions so I can build a, another core. Don't really know what I'm going to do with it yet. Uh, maybe that core can move forward and take Manassas, or maybe I can move him up to try to clear this area along with Carney's core. Maybe I can move him up here in case we have a real trouble with Pittsburgh. Uh, we'll see, but uh, I'm about one turn away from having a good strong five divisions plus this Iron Brigade, which popped up sitting in Washington, D.C., ready to go. Uh, and I think that's it. Robert E. Lee is still besieging Fort Moreau. Looks like he's getting some reinforcements, but doesn't look like it'll be enough to cause me any real trouble. Uh, I think we've gone around the board. Let me pause it, make sure I didn't forget anything, and then I'll hit end turn, let you know if anything happens. So hold on a sec. All right, so no surprise, Hooker has taken Fort Jackson. So that's the third fort we need to take around New Orleans, finally. Next, we can take Hooker and pull him back up to New Orleans and see if we can't head north with him a little bit. I'll pause it, see if anything else happens. Hold on a sec. Okay, so uh, wow. Uh, Grant was trying to pull back to Louisville, but before he managed to leave the uh, region he was in, he got attacked by this extremely large force under Hindman, General Hindman. They had 40,000 men. Grant had 25,000, 26,000 under his command. And we've taken a defeat. Uh, but this is the sort of defeat I like. We got hit. We lost 5,258 men. But the enemy lost 9,287 men. So we inflicted 4,000 more casualties during this loss. We had six uh, elements of our divisions routed, but they had ten routed. So it's a defeat, but it looks good to me. I'll, I think I'll take it. You can see it was our artillery that did a lot of the damage. You know, they attacked us, so our artillery was sitting there pumping along and, and breaking them up as they attacked. So uh, that's pretty good news. I don't know where Grant ended up quite yet. We'll find out next turn. Let me pause it, keep going, and then we'll look at... Uh, how things lay after this. Yikes! So Grant pulled back to Cincinnati and a portion of the Confederate Army under Ruggles followed him there and there was a very small battle. Uh, Grant lost 615 men and the Confederates didn't lose any. I imagine Grant's now gonna have to retreat back beyond Cincinnati. So this is no good. I sure hope we don't lose Cincinnati but it might happen. I'll pause it. We'll see what happens next. Okay guys, let me show you what happened in, and then I'm going to end this video because uh, there are a few game mechanics I'd like to explain and I don't want this video to run too long on time. So let me show you what happened. Uh, Grant was here uh, in Boone, Kentucky. He went to move to Louisville like I told him to, but before he crossed the river he got attacked out of Lexington and he lost a battle here but uh, inflicted a lot more casualties than he took, so that was pretty good. Grant retreated here to Cincinnati, and he got immediately chased uh, by units, and he lost a small battle in Cincinnati, and he retreated further to Dayton. This is the Confederate force that chased him to Cincinnati. It continued to chase him to Dayton, where Grant apparently pulled a rather amazing maneuver. He retreated before there was a battle at Dayton, so no battle took place, but he managed to retreat back in the direction of Cincinnati. So I this works pretty good for me. I'm, I'm pretty proud of Grant. Uh, so we end up with Grant with pretty beat up troops. Needs a rest and they need to refit a little bit, but they are defending Cincinnati for me. Um, so I'm going to let him sit there and dig in for a while. We lost Dayton, Ohio. Uh, that stinks, but it's sure better than losing Cincinnati. Um, and I think I've cut off his retreat, so we're going to try to figure out if we can deal with these troops one way or another. But that's what happened. In the meantime, down in New Orleans, we took this fort, so Joe Hooker can start moving back up here. And uh, Lion is still on his way to Little Rock. And finally, 
we now have two separate units of Confederates loose in Pennsylvania. <laughs> uh, one near Pittsburgh, where Key's Corps is hanging out. So he should be able to handle that. But this guy uh, is facing no opposition at the moment. So we're going to have to organize something to go over there. Uh, we'll talk about that next video. Let me end this video now. Uh, and uh, we'll, in the next video, in the next turn, talk about all this stuff. And we'll also talk about promoting promoting our generals, which finally I'm able to do. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.